Well, Election Day is eight days away and voters in Minneapolis will be picking a mayor. Today, the top four candidates in the race squared off in a debate. Esme Murphy was one of the moderators of the debate and she joins us now with the latest. Hi, Esme. Hi, Amelia. Well, the debate, as you said, was between four leading candidates. It covered a lot of ground, including the contentious issue of replacing the Minneapolis Police Department. Next week's vote on that Charter Amendment 2 to replace the Minneapolis Police is being watched across the country. The candidates set out some clear differences on whether the Minneapolis police should continue to exist. We also need police. Uh, and right now we have fewer officers per capita than just about any major city in the entire country. Chief Arredondo and I have been working lockstep to make sure that we're tackling this extremely important issue. Sheila Najad has mobilized progressives for Amendment 2, which would replace police. As I stated, I am fully in support of question 2. In fact, I helped write it. A.J. Awed's position has shifted. Last year, he wanted to abolish the police. This year, he's for keeping them on the job. For me, I would not say that that's a consistency. I would say that is extreme consistency. Former state representative Kate Knuth was on the attack throughout, ripping Mayor Fry. Mayor Fry has literally seen officers hunting people in our city and has not yet created accountability within the MPD. Mayor Fry fired back, saying with George Floyd's death, the riots, and the COVID pandemic, it has not been easy. The last two years have been unprecedented. They've been unpredictable. And whatever other superlative that you want to attach. Attorney and DFL strategist Abu Amara says it's Charter Amendment 2 that is making this Minneapolis election so important. This is going to be symbolically one of the most consequential things in the United States. A litmus test not just for police here, but for departments nationwide. People will look to us from Seattle to D.C. and say, does a police department have a role in a 21st century uh, progressive style of politics? And it's not just the public safety amendment that's being watched. How council members and candidates who called for defunding the police do will be carefully scrutinized. If they and the amendment succeed, progressives will have won a huge battle. If they fail, it will be a signal that the defund the police movement missed its mark. All right, Esme, thank you. And if you missed the debate, we will be re-airing it tonight at 7 on CBSN Minnesota. And as Esme alluded to, there are other issues than just the uh, race for mayor. Minneapolis residents will be voting on a number of major issues, including rent control and the future of policing. It's likely a big reason behind the early voting numbers that are an, at an all-time high. As of Friday, the city's received about 12,500 early ballots so far. Hennepin County Election Manager Ginny Gelm says uh, that absentee voting across the county has been on an upward trend since the pandemic. There is um, some anecdotal evidence that we have a very high level of political engagement, um, particularly in, in our community in Hennepin County um, last year and this year. So I, I think we're just we're seeing people um, becoming uh, maybe more invested or more interested um, in, in, in voting. Um, so I, I think that's what we're seeing with some of these turnout numbers um, that, that we've got going on. If you are voting absentee, you need to mail in your ballot by tomorrow to give administrators enough time to receive and accept your vote so it counts for November 2nd.